by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, present The Lone Ranger. <laughs> With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high on silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past, come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Cowboy, ride that bronc. Who is it, Lone Ranger? That's champion, Bob Burroughs. What can you say in that saddle? Well, he sure makes it look easy. Well, you know it isn't. Bronc busting is hard to do, harder to learn. Take Bob Burroughs. I know he started riding as a youngster. He took his share of spills, but he kept at it. And he kept in condition, including eating his Wheaties. In fact, now that Bob Burroughs is a champion, he still eats Wheaties. Plenty of practice, plenty of the right food. That's sound advice for anyone hoping to be a champion. It sure is, Lone Ranger, because champions are made, not born. And there's a good solid reason why Wheaties can give you the energy to go a long, long way. It's this. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. A whole kernel of wheat. The cereal grain that's famous for energy. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. It was press day at the Modoc City News, and Inky, the 14-year-old adopted son of editor Tom Bent, was busy sweeping the floor of the office. Tom's wife, Hilda, worked at a nearby desk, while Tom himself labored in the back room to keep the press operating. Inky looked up as the door opened and saw Toto and Ned, the houseboy from Ma Hanks Hotel. Hi, ah, Toto. Ned. Hello, Inky. It's great to see you, Tano. Where's the Lone Ranger? Uh, him with Marshal Jim Fraser. I heard him say he's looking for an escaped convict named Deke Jones. Ah. We think Jones near Modoc City. Mrs. Bent, Ma Hank sent me to pick up the paper you're contributing to her rummage sale. It's there on the counter, Ned. Hey, someone else is coming here. An old timer, it looks like. Ah. Me know him. Him outlaw named Sid Carson. An outlaw? Not outlaw now. Him served time in jail. I'd like to see the editor of this newspaper, right? Hey, you're coming home. Not right. You and your mask friend jail me. Ah, you go straight now? Yeah, doggone right. Did I hear someone ask for me? Yeah, I asked for you if you're the editor. Well, I am. And maybe you run an ad for a shaving mug. Shaving mug? Yes, yeah, a special one. Tell where there's a hundred thousand dollars worth of gold to be found. Oh, no, 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 no. Pete stole the gold 15 years ago. And hit it somewhere near Modoc City. Stolen gold, eh? Well, it was stolen from Mexican revolutionists. Their prop was discovered and they went into hiding. Right now, that gold belongs to whoever finds it. And I'll split with the man who helps me. You say the gold's hidden near here? Yes. Brother Pete hid it. Then joined my other brothers. And soon after that, they were caught in jail. And the Lone Ranger caught me. I went to prison in California. Where are your brothers now? Yeah. Hank went to the gallows. Pete got life in territorial prison. Jed was turned over to the law in California. He was sentenced to the same prison I was. Now, me here about capture a gang. Yeah. Jed was killed trying to burn out of prison. <laughs> but he'd already told me about Pete's gold. <clears throat> when were you released? A couple of months ago. 
I went to territorial prison to see Pete. Did he tell you about the gold? No, he couldn't. The guards might have overheard us talk. But Pete's cellmate was a trusty <laughs> who painted things on glass in China. On visiting days, he sold his work outside the prison gates. Well, that's one of the privileges of being a trusty. Pete told me that he had the trusty paint a picture of our old homestead on the shaving mug. <laughs> he said the picture even showed the old bull in the pasture. What about it? Uh, we never had a homestead. The picture tells where the gold's hidden. Oh, the gold. Oh, before I could buy the mug, some other visitor got it. Two days later, Pete died. But, but who bought the mug? Well, the trustee said he sold it to a peddler. I followed the critter this far, but have lost his trail. Now I'm broke. Can't go any further without help. Uh, why, uh, why'd you come to me? I heard that you were on the level. I trust you. Well, thanks. Mug might turn up if you run an ad saying it's a keepsake. Well, uh, I'll think about it, Sid. Meanwhile, uh, here's five dollars. Get yourself a good meal. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. For sure, use a meal. Yeah. So long, Injun. Adios, Sid. Don't forget to run the ad for the mug. <laughs> the old fraud day. Don't you believe what it said, Tom? Of course not. Is he gone, Tom? Yes, he'll live. He told us all about a fortune in hidden gold. Yes. If you're to take that station here tomorrow and hang for the rummage there, you better get going. Yes, I'm going right now. So long, Nicky. See you later, Ned. But don't tell anyone about the gold. Don't worry. I'll keep it quiet. <laughs> There's no need for secrecy again. But, Tom, we don't want everyone to find out about that buried treasure. What's this talk about buried treasure? Oh, forget it, Hilda. Oh, and Sid was just telling a good story. I believed him. <laughs> At your age, I might have believed him, too, Inky. Now, here's a copy of the paper for the Lone Ranger, Tonto. The ink's still wet. Oh, uh, me take it to him. Oh, Ed, I'm going with you, Tonto. I'd like to talk to the masked man about that escaped convict he's looking for. The escaped convict named Deke Jones had found shelter in Ace Spencer's Cafe in Modoc City. From the window of a second-floor bedroom that served as a hideout, the freshly shaven fugitive looked into the street. Ace Spencer stood beside him, scowling. Deke, what started a smart gent like you on a treasure hunt? I was in the prison hospital, Ace, bunking next to Pete Carson when he died. While he was delirious, he mistook me for his brother, Sid. Told me to be sure to get a hold of the shaven mug his cellmate painted it. The picture on the mug tells where to find a hundred thousand dollars in buried gold. <laughs> you believe that? I found out Sid tried to buy the mug from the trustee, but it had already been sold to a peddler. And the trustee said Sid asked a lot of questions about the fellow who bought it. Mm. So I broke out of prison, figuring the risk was worth it if I could find the gold and clear out of the country. And I finally traced the peddler who bought it to Modoc City. So well, that's why you turned up here. Sid Carson's in town for the same reason. I was watching from this window when he went into the newspaper office. He came out a few minutes ago and headed for my Hank's hotel. You think he's found the mug? There's only one way to find out. Ask him. I'll split that gold with you if you'll help me get it. All right. What about old Sid Carson? If he saw that mug... We'll kill him if we have to to get it. Now go to the Henry house before he leaves the place. But you better go armed in case of trouble. I am armed. Oh, sneak gun, eh? That's the easiest way to take a man by surprise. Well, if you shoot, make sure Carson doesn't live to talk. Don't worry. I'll not put my neck in a noose. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's good to know you can make something out of yourself. And you can, because champions are made, not born. Take the story of Jack Kramer, tennis star. When Jack was just 11 years, his tennis didn't win him cheers. But practice built his power game, and he got on his way to fame with Wheaties, the food the champs acclaim. Today, Jack tops the tennis clan for 22 years of Wheaties man. Jack Kramer, going steady on Wheaties since he was 11 years old. Mighty good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Jack, serve that ball. Hey, hey, hey! He's 
He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way <laughs> with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> to continue. Ned returned to Ma Hanks Hotel. The buxom landlady was in the large front parlor. Neat sacks of silver and paper currency were on the table in front of her. Ma, I hope you're not robbed because I was late. <laughs> I don't blame anyone for losing track of time with the Lone Ranger and Tonto around. Ah, come on, the rummage sale's over. We'll clear out of here so Jenny can clean the parlor. Say, bring that box, will you, Ned? Yes. What's in it? Some stuff that was left in the hotel by an old peddler who left town without paying his room rent. Doesn't anyone want it? I couldn't even give it away. Oh, if you're giving it away, I'll take it. <laughs> well, that suits me, Ned. Say, while I'm putting this cash in the safe, you go to the dining room and see if the old fellow at the table is getting an update. Right. <laughs> Sid Carson was the only occupant of the dining room, blissfully enjoying the best meal he'd eaten in many years. The old man wanted nothing, so Ned returned to the kitchen to investigate the contents of the box Ma had given him. He was lifting the lid when Inky entered, carrying an armful of newspapers. Finished for the day, Inky? No, I'm delivering the newspaper. I brought my hand two dozen copies to sell to a guest. Well, she's in her office putting the cash away. I'll put her papers on the table. What's that stuff? Oh, that's just some things we couldn't sell at the rummage sale. Look, here's an old mouth organ. Hey, it works. Here's your pistol. But the trigger's busted. Oh, that's no good. There's a shaving outfit. Ah, the mug's cut and chip. No one would want that. Ned, look at the picture on the mug. Just a lot of scenery with a bull in the pasture. And... Jumping grasshopper. That's the mug. The one the trusty painted. You're right. Ma said this stuff was left in the hotel by a peddler who skipped out without paying his bill. And Sid told Tom the peddler bought the mug. Ned, we've got to find Mr. Carson. He's in the dining room right now. Let's go see him. The two boys almost tripped each other in their haste to reach the swinging door that opened into the dining room. In their excitement, they didn't pay any attention to Ace Spencer, who sat across the table from Sid Carson. Spencer had been questioning the old convict when Inky shouted, Mr. Carson, we found it. Look at it. What? It's mug. Look. What's wrong, Mr. Carson? Ace Spencer reached beneath his coat for his gun as Inky held the mug, pointing with an ink-smudged finger at the scene painted on the side. At that moment, the door from the kitchen opened, and Ma Hank strode into the room. Ned, what's the idea of leaving that stuff right out on my kitchen floor? Now, I gave it to you because I wanted to get rid of it. But, Ma, I just wanted to... Leave it out of the kitchen floor. Oh, now, get moving. Hey, Spencer, what's the idea of pulling a gun in my hotel? Get your hands up, Ma. Keep your voice down. Why, you loco tin horn. If you think you can come in... You're all covered. You can't cover all of us at once. I can cover you long enough to get that mug. No, no, the mug's mine. Not anymore. Hand it over, Inky. Inky's mind raced. The door to the kitchen was behind him, and Ma Hank stood beside him. Holding the mug tightly, he turned and raced for the door. Come back here. Ace whirled to shooting, but Ma Hank's 275 pounds blocked him. Ace backed away before the huge landlady could grab his gun arm. By that time, Inky had escaped. Now, what are you going to do, Spencer? Inky's gone. You three are going out the back door of this hotel and through the alley to my place. I'm not going anywhere. Follow orders or I'll shoot Ned and Sid Carson. And I'll put a bullet through you. Why, you dirty skunk. If I had my scatter gun... Get up and get moving. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tonto and Tom Bent found the Lone Ranger and Marshal Jim Fraser a short distance from town. The masked man pointed out the tracks he and the marshal were following. The Indian recognized the loose right front shoe. Them tracks. Same as ones we follow from territorial prison. Uh-huh. We'll get the critter now. You mind if I join the man hunting you, Jim? Not at all, Tom. Come on. Get here, here, here. As they rode slowly watching the ground, Tom told them about Sid Carson's visit to the newspaper office earlier that day. You tried expecting me to believe that story about buried gold. The story's true, Tom. What's what? that? 
Pete Carson stole the gold from Mexican revolutionists. Then Pete buried the gold. Where? Uh, no one knew until it was found ten years ago. Well, I'll be doggone. Who found it, mister? A couple of federal agents uncovered it, Marshal Jim. They returned the gold to the Mexican government. Does Sid know it was found? I don't think so, Tom. The affair was handled quietly by Washington and officials of Mexico. Well, how come you know about it? I was with the man who found it. Uh, poor old Sid Jim for a big disappointment. As he lay on the floor in the cellar beneath Ace Spencer's cafe, Sid Carson regretted the impulse that had taken him to the newspaper office in search of his brother's gold. Now Ma Hank and Ned, her houseboy, were also prisoners, tied hand and foot like himself. Not one of the prisoners was gagged. Yell your heads off, you want to. This cellar's so well built, no one will hear you. You're local, Ace Spencer. Think you'll bring the law here. I doubt that, Ma. I think she's right, Ace. Eh? Yeah. He doesn't know I brought these three here, Deke. No, but he's likely to start a search of the whole town. He won't if he knows his friends will die. What do you mean? I'll tell him to give me the mug and keep his mouth shut. Or else. Or else we shoot these three, huh? Right, yeah. You keep an eye on him, Deke. Oh, I go look for Inky. Hey, As Ace Spencer emerged from the cellar door that opened on an alley in the rear of his cafe, he saw a strange cavalcade coming from his stable. Marshal Fraser was in the lead. Behind him was the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Tom Bent. Ace, you're just the man we want to see. Hey, what's the idea of traveling with a masked man, Marshal? That's my business. Right now, you're the one who'll answer questions. Well, if you've seen Inky, you should know better than to believe anything he says. Hey. What do you mean by that, Spencer? Inky's a lying little sneak. Hey, you hold it, Tom. I'll knock his head off for talking about Inky that way. We didn't come here to talk about Inky. You, you didn't? No. Who owns the chestnut mare in your stable? Why, that belongs to... To, uh, Cowpoke. Where's the Cowpoke now? Well, he... Uh, I reckon he's in the cafe. Toto, go to the cafe. See if anyone answering that man's description is inside. Me, Savvy. Me go look for him. But I didn't describe the fellow who owns that mare. You don't know what he looks like. The masked man knows who he is. Why'd you ask me about him? Because I figured you were a crook. You can't prove anything against me. I never had anything against you except the crooked games you run in your cafe. You cleaned those up. I paid my... And I turned you loose. But I didn't change my mind about the kind of pole cat you are. Marshal Jim! Marshal Jim! Yeah, Jinky. I'm going to over for you, Marshal Jim. Yeah, I'm clearing out of here. No, no, don't let him get away. Oh, shimmer down, Jinky. But he's a crook. He tried to get this shaving mug. He pulled a gun in my hand and met him sending me. What about that, Spencer? He's lying. It's the truth, mister. He wants to get the mug. <laughs> okay. You still have the mug. You tried to take it. Oh, that's loco. What would I want with an old saving mug? It's yeah? worth a fortune. It might have been if you'd had the mug before Pete Carson's gold was found, Inky. Huh? That's right, Inky. Pete's gold was returned to Mexico years ago. Then, then the mug's... Worthless. Oh. Pete, don't. Not in Cafe Kimasabi. He isn't. We must have left the cafe. Maybe somewhere else in town. I figured you were hiding that crook, Spencer. You figured wrong. Perhaps not. Huh? Spencer was coming from the cellar when we met him, Marshal Jim. That's so. If he wanted to conceal Jones, that would be an ideal place to hide him. Gee, that's right. There's no one in the cellar. I'll see for myself. Stand aside, Ace. You stand where you are, Marshal. Ace reached for his hidden gun. As his derringer cleared leather, the Lone Ranger's Colt roared. Oh, A silver oh. bullet struck Ace's gun arm. His fingers relaxed their grip on the weapon. An instant later, the small gun fell to the ground. He was going for a sneak gun. He was going to shoot you, Marshal Jim. Mister, your shot saved my life. Forget it, Marshal Jim. I do keep an eye on Spencer. Potter and I'll investigate the cellar. <laughs> A few moments later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved down the steps leading to Spencer's cellar. Tonto's moccasined feet made no sound. But when Deke Jones heard the masked man's boots on the stairs, he called... Hi, Navy Ace. Did you get the muck? Turning his attention from the prisoners, Deke looked toward the steps, expecting to see Ace Spencer. Hey, what the... Hey, mister, thank goodness you're here. Don't try for that gun, Deke. Hey, uh, how'd you know my name? The warden in territorial prison gave me your description... The warden? Yes. We've been following your trail for weeks. For what? To send you back where you came from. Prison? No, masked man. Go ahead. No! Hey, you got him. You shot the gun out of his hand. Toto, cut the ropes on Ma and Ned and Sid Carson while I turn Deke Jones over to Marshal Jim. (laughs) 
Fifteen minutes later, Deke Jones and Ace Spencer were in jail. Ma Hank, Ned, Inky, Tom Dent, and Sid Carson were in the marshal's office talking to the young lawman. They explained how Ace had captured them. You pay for that. And he'll likewise get a stiff sentence for hiding an escaped convict. <laughs> That's one trial I'll enjoy watching. I'll have a front seat in court the day he's sentenced. I wish the masked man could be there. Uh, he and Tano have already left town, Inky. They're riding back to territorial prison to report Deke Jones' capture to the warden. Well, I reckon I'll go back to the hotel. Uh, say, Sid, I need a fella to help out the Henry house. Uh, if you want the job, it's yours. Oh, God, ma'am. Working at the hotel means that I'll get three square meals a day. I'll work for free just to be sure of eating your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you eat at my place for a while, Sid, and you'll fatten up in no time. Uh, come on, we'll see about finding your place to bunk. I never figured folks in Murdoch City would be so good for an old convict like me. Here's your shaving mug, Mr. Carson. I- I'm sorry someone else beat you to the gold. Thanks, Hinky. Who got that gold? The mass man said he and a couple of federal men found it ten years ago, Sid. They returned it to the Mexican government. Oh, poor Pete. He'd be downright broken up if he'd known his gold was found by two lawmen and the lone ranger. To run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Kids, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Cheerios, remember, is made from oats, yet needs no cooking. Eat Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little red O's. Then you'll hear people say... He's stealing his Cheerios. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. Directed by Charles D. Livingston and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.